It's Chris Pratt, a video of him and her post sex shouting me out. We had an incident happen where I was in a fire truck and the fact that you protected me and looked out for me like and you didn't have to. It was something I'll never fucking forget. Hi, everyone. Hey, hi. Welcome hey. back to another episode of After, After We Wrap with Jana Lee Ortiz and Gabriela Ortiz. And um, I don't know if you noticed, but you can see that we have someone extremely special here. Yeah. Um, we, we don't really need an intro. I kind of love him um, a lot. We do. He's the one who made this podcast possible. Yep. He is it's all me talented funny can pretty much do anything the one and only shane mother in heartline great <laughs> lost monetization immediately do you know if you two if you're on youtube usually if you say Curse. a curse word within 10 minutes that you lose monetization let's do it again let's do that one more um, time um, um uh the and one... i think we should just do another take because i think you guys can do something better add a you little could, more spice you to do it that. At the end, you can. And I'm gonna have special effects for my intro. I'm gonna have pyrotechnics. I'm gonna have all kinds of things. Look at you. Okay, so, um, I don't Ladies, know. Ladies, are, are we doing it again? I'm pretty sure. Jana, say three of my credits Jana, as well. If you wanted, I hope Thank you so oh, much, oh. Kyle. Thank you. Oh my get gosh. the. She gets get the, the f out of here. <laughs> God, we gotta redo it again. He gets the royal treatment. We gotta okay, redo it again, Jana. Go. You gotta say three of my I credits too. It. You've seen him in blank, blank, blank. This is your you coffee. I don't you want your coffee. You, okay. You were going to do You that. guys, you've seen him on Station 19. Yep. You've seen him on Rock of Ages. Right. And you've seen him on Star Wars, Obi-Wan. Damn. She remembered okay. some of the shit I've done. It is my husband, the love of my life, our BFF. <laughs> the producer, <Yes>. creator, <laughs> creator, executive of eh, eh, all eh, eh. After We Wrap. <laughs> Podcast. We almost lost the camera. Ladies and gentlemen, Shane Hartline. There we go. There we go. There we go. We did it. He brings the spice to spicy. This is. <laughs> did you Did you see what he did? He's like, damn, I can't. I can't believe she remembered everything, babe. Well, the one and only. <laughs> Always She's never me. seen any of the work. I've <laughs> that's done. not true. Ba take it back, because that's not true. I love the banter that we're gonna get out of this episode. It is so, weird though to be very. Um, hi, babe. Real. It's weird to sit on this side. Hi, babe. Right? Hi, babe. I wore this for you. Do you like so, my outfit? Yeah, it's very salsa clown chic. Kyle said- um, Salsa clown chic. <laughs> Louis. <laughs> Kyle said it reminded him of- um, 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 I dream of Jeannie. I dream, I of, dream Jeannie. of Jeannie. So, Junie. But in your, it would be- Oh, I dream of Jeannie. And this is my pitch. If we're going to make a remake um, of Bewitched or I dream of Jeannie. Hola. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I disappeared. Did you see that, guys? Put your phone on. I the, disappeared. I mean, Did put you see that, guys? Look, look, look. Where is she? Can you add that hey, in the special effects? Can you angle the mic? Now I'm, my producer brain Where is, is going to be all over this. Oh, I'm back, you guys. I'm back. <laughs> wow. You know what? <laughs> that was my pitch. Um, we're almost hitting, <laughs> not to get it. into your personal lives, <laughs> yes. but we're almost hitting a one year oh we God. wedding yes. anniversary. Yeah. Yes. And I want to take the ball. You know, maybe we could drop this. Plant, drop the seeds. That's what she said. Maybe we can plant the seeds. Also, what she said. Maybe we can um, tease. Also, what she said. Nice. We might be doing no. um, a one-year sell up. What? Don't grab she the said, ball. Don't, don't the grab ball. the ball. Yeah, okay. Ball. Yeah. He gets possessive of it. No, he just wants to play. He thinks he's gonna see. play. Ignoring. We might be doing a one year kind of celebration of sorts in Los Angeles. And that's something that had, I think that's that new, we should that's do. New to me. We should, you should celebrate your victories. And this is like, Oh, you mean the podcast the podcast. Yeah. What did you think? I, mean? our, I thought you were talking about wedding, the wedding anniversary. It's not always about the wedding. Babe. I'm still obsessing about everything. I know she's getting married every, every year. year to you <laughs> for the first time. <laughs> I hope not. Um, this is what I deal with you guys. Wait, but anyways, I feel like if I were a wrestler, this would be like my outfit. I, I right, yeah, yeah okay. I, I, this is my yeah, wrestler. I like that. Let's just get to outfit. it. I feel like the world, yes, the world needs to know a little bit more about Shane Hartline. Mm, we know I that. I disagree. No, we know uh, that you are an actor, but mm -hmm. you're also a creative producer. Uh, you pretty much can do anything, and mm -hmm. you thrive in the comedy world. And I feel like a lot of people have, you know, obviously with TikTok and all of your followers and all of the sketches you've done in the past. Um, I want to I want to share a little bit with everyone. There's a slight camera adjustment because of Lou. <laughs> um, what yeah, over, over there just took FYI. 
Um, what what inspired you to be an actor? But like from the moment from the moment you knew this mm-hmm. is what you wanted to do. When take I us think, back there. I mean, I've tried to like because I've had people ask me that question many times, and you know, I've made quote unquote content since I was very young. Like I picked up a video camera when I was ten years old. But I think that. The moment that I like realized I wanted to be an actor was like, I used to film myself doing like sketches and stuff. And then I was just so addicted to the feeling of showing people that stuff and seeing their reactions. Mm. So I think it's a mix of a lot of things. I think it's a little bit of that. I think I, I, I mean, many people that know me know that I was heavily influenced by nineties Nickelodeon. I also just like loved, I loved to, perform and like do silly like skits in front of like my parents and my grandparents and you know like every kid back in the day was like we're gonna put on a show but like I loved to make them laugh it was like my favorite thing Mm. like (laughs) like my impersonations of Elvis would just destroy my grandparents like they would just die wait you do an Elvis impersonation Um, no but like my attempt my poor attempt as a kid of doing Elvis like they would just lose uh, their mind. They think yeah. they would think it was so funny. Mm. And so I think it was that it was just, Oh, I like the feeling of performing. And that's, I think true in that, like I'm very much not, I'm never really content in the sense of some people can just, I am fine just being an actor. And that yeah. is all my focus. I th- feel like I thrive Like, all right, I'm acting, but I'm also, I like making content. I like performing on stage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I never, I can't put my eggs in just one basket. I'm just, that's, it's not how I operate. I perform better when I, when I feel like I have a bunch of things happening. Um, But yeah, to, to go back to your question, I think it was just like at a very young age, just seeing reactions, like instant, like, oh, they're reacting to this. That is so cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I remember at a young age, before the internet, uh, you know, in a small town, you don't know how to get into acting. Yeah. Like, you know, you just hope you meet somebody that knows somebody. And, and you yeah. grew up in Florida, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're in Florida again? Central Florida, um, little town called Lake Wales. And yeah, there was no, I mean, there was a little theater there. Like it was called the Little Theater, Lake Wales Little <laughs> Theater. And I, I, uh, I, I didn't even get involved with that because like I was... Even from a young age, I was like, no, I'm going to film things and I'm going to be on TV and film. And like, it's not that I, I just didn't know what that was, but I knew it wasn't then what I wanted. I wanted to be, I wanted to be on Nickelodeon. And so much so that I would call Universal Studios (laughs) and try to get myself on the shows at a young age because I was like, well, I'm just going to call and see if like I can audition or something, you know, but. Wow. mm -hmm. And look at you. Yeah. I think (laughs) you. Look at me. I think you what are. No, it? you are a true testament to. Um, Louis? Is he just, is he just, look at him. I'm oh so sorry. I'm so sorry. I love He's it. out of control. I love it. Um, what, well, we won't get into this deep question. We won't, we'll get into that later. Um, how, how do you approach developing characters? Because I, I don't know if anyone else knows, but he, he can do impersonations of almost anyone so how how do you like how, how do you get into that what do I, you it's weird study because them? it it you know it's over the years like characters have i've needed to make them for like snl tapes and things like that so the intention behind some of my past characters were truly like to be very technically or to answer very technically, it was like, what do I think the, sh- what does the show need? What does SNL need? But lately what I think has been working with my characters is taking like a bit of truth from myself. Like my Southern man character is, is my dad, like cranked up to 10. And yeah. the, my yeah. emo character was who I wanted, who I, who I was really on the inside when I was like in <laughs> high school and in middle school. Are you serious? Yeah. I mean, like I was outwardly this, like, this, you know, big wrestler kid, but on the inside, I loved like dark emo music and I wanted to dress like that, but my mom would not have it. Um, you know, so it's like, I think the more late lately, the characters and stuff that, you know, I like to do certain impressions, but I love characters, characters, original characters are 
what I love. And most of them lately, like I said, are just from truth, like stuff I really know. Who is your greatest inspiration in, I want to ask you for two inspirations, one in wrestling and one in acting, theater, film or TV. Um, Sting has always been my favorite wrestler. I'm actually, by the time this comes out, we will have seen his last match. So we're going to see his last match. Really looking forward to it. And then comedy, it's many people. Robin Williams is definitely at the top of the list. Mm -hmm. Um, I was actually fortunate enough to meet him, which was really Mm -hmm. a special, something I'll always hold really (sighs) close. Um, And then uh, there's so many other people that have influenced me, like Chris Farley, Jim Carrey. Like I'm a 90s kid. Like those, those heavy hitters back then were just, they molded my comedic voice especially early on. Like if you watch some of my stuff, you're like, Oh, he's just doing Mm -hmm. Jim Carrey or Chris Farley or her, um, a mix of so many people. But, um, do you think those are my main, main. that style of comedy will make a comeback eventually in the, in the business? Cause it's kind of quiet down. Like, you know, they're, they brought the physical comedy, Uh you know, and revolutionize the comedy scene, but you don't see that much right now. I think physical comedy is, People are hungry for something stupid. Mm -hmm. People are hungry comedy wise for something like silly that doesn't take itself so seriously. I think Mm -hmm. it's, it's starting to make a comeback and how I see that to be true is like, look what works on TikTok. Mm -hmm. Like, and people will say, Oh, it's just TikTok. But to me, why I take my TikTok and my, my social media so seriously is like, that's the mass audience, whatever people are responding to, really is what is working and people are wanting. And I think it's a lot of big characters and mm-hmm. physically silly things that, you know, I think with, man, so much heavy shit happening at all times, people are craving anything to distract themselves from it. Mm-hmm. And what does that more than like just big characters that, you know, don't take themselves so seriously. Yeah. You right. know? Yeah. Yeah. So I see it coming, making a comeback. Maybe that's just hopeful thinking, but um, it's, <laughs> Louis is, is having is it the a ball? mental breakdown. Oh, let's take it. Let's take a pause. Because he can't grab his little ball. <sighs> breathing, breathing, breathing. I don't know why I'm so nervous. I feel like I'm, I, I, I'm, feel like, I, I was nervous about this too. I it's, feel like there's a little bit of pressure here. Wow. I'm the only one also that's like, nervous. Yeah. I, I, we've talked about doing this for a while, but like. I kind of haven't wanted to in a sense that like, I don't think people care about what I have to say. If they do, they can find it somewhere else. But like we've talked about so long. I'm like, let's just do it and be done with it. Mm -hmm. Um, But no, I'm a little nervous too. It's weird. I I feel like, because it's like, I feel like it's not that people don't care. It's what it's, we think that people, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or it's like, but that's our, that's that's our our imposter syndrome kicking in. It's, it's all of it, but. It's our own. Like, yeah, it is also inner, like I said, very weird to sit on this side of the camera. Yeah. for so long. There, we, you know, not that I'm inviting myself back on, but there are so many things we could talk about, like the inception of the show. You know how we met. How, you know, there's so many things we. I would love to dissect and get deeper on, but like I'm like, yeah, I wanted I mean, you well, to like at, to form the questions, so I didn't. You, you were also a very interesting person with a lot of of depth that I feel like people don't get to see because it's always this, this other like Caricature version of, you that, of myself. Yes. Mm. And so I think, it, I think I, there's a lot of reason I do that. Cause uh, I, I think, and it's funny, like with, when I started doing stand up, which I never thought I'd do, like started two years ago, it was behind only characters. Cause I was terrified. Wow. So I think there's a huge part of it. Like I'm comfortable being other people myself. Mm-hmm is I'm getting more comfortable right, being myself. Right. And it, yeah. it it comes from several reasons, you know, like childhood insecurities. I think a lot of us do this because we have some deep childhood insecurities, something we're trying to fix or heal, but for me layered on top of it is my like vocal neurological condition that I'm still very insecure about at times. And you wrote so, a, you uh created and produced a film yeah, on that too, Cookie. right? Cookie. You can watch it on YouTube. I'm very, very proud of it. And like all the people that help make Cookie, just search Cookie short film on YouTube. But um, yeah, I mean, in a nutshell, most people watching that know me 
know that I live with a neurological condition that affects my speech and a very mild, mild case of it. And I always want to say that because there are people that suffer. Um, but you know, it was only when I like kind of opened up and started the process of trying to own the condition instead of like hating it about myself, which I still very much sometimes do. Um, did things start to lighten a bit, you know, but I truly mean it when I say this, like I want to raise awareness about it um, because it's mm. still so very unknown by most people. And like most people that meet me, like they're like, oh, I never even noticed it. You know, what's so crazy. When I first met you, I thought it was a choice. And I said, oh. I, uh, that's interesting. I thought it some was people a- think that too. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I thought it was that a, is not the case. Uh, <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, I should start talking like that. Like I thought, I almost thought, uh-huh. oh wow, this is that's what he's bringing into this character. Interesting. Oh, but he also talks like that, and re- like that's I there's there's a quality about that 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 I appreciate or that I at mm. least found mm-hmm. um, interesting, but also charming. Mm. I was like, oh, he there's this. That's and cool. I, I didn't know, and that's now, a cool perspective because like it's funny. It's I meet right so here. many people that have so many different perspectives, excuse me, when they meet me uh, and hear it or whatever, notice it. Some people don't even ever notice it, but yeah. there are always some people that they notice it and they're like, oh, that's cool. And then there's some people and they're always a certain type of energy that notice it and are negative about it. Mm-hmm. And it's usually the yeah. type of person that is dealing with something themselves that they're like, they're the type of people that have to find something with somebody else so they can move the spotlight to that person is at least that's what I've Mm-hmm. I've I've learned over the years, but it's the always the same type of people that make a uh, negative. Like, what's wrong with you? Yeah. Like, I'll never forget. I was on a date, BG, before Gabby, and BG. this girl within five minutes, like, what the? You sound like you're dying. Like oh within God. five minutes, she's and I'm like, oh, this is never gonna work. Yeah. Like, oh my God. I do not like your energy. Oh. Um, anyway, sorry. Well, one, you don't <laughs> sound like you're dying, yeah. and two. Fudabi. Fudabi. Excuse me, we can't curse. Fudabi. Fudabi. I think it's been past Fudabi. 10 minutes, Fudabi. right? Fudabi. Yeah, we're good now. Fudabi. We're in the clear. What, uh, what advice would you give to aspiring comedians and actors who are just, who are just starting out? Um, My gut is... Because I, I'm, I'm sure there are a lot of people that look at you and they go, oh my gosh. I know. I know. It's crazy. That's not how to do it. Um, I, yeah. No, I mean... The simplest answer, I think, is just... Uh, don't do it. Just no. kidding. <laughs> don't do it so there's more for me. No. Um, <laughs> I think the simplest answer is just, like, f- find any way to, like, practice and showcase and perform. Like, it's like any muscle. You have to just... It's like taking acting classes. It's like people, I'm sure, ask you and you all the time, like, how do you get into acting? Like, what... They're looking for some shortcut. Everybody wants, like, a magic yeah. pill to, to get you from zero to 100, but... There really isn't. And, and I'm, I'm a victim of that in a sense when I was in my early in my career and some things worked, some things like did bring me fun attention, but you know, I quickly realized like, while early in my career, I was trying to find a quick shortcut to Mm. the victory that I was looking for. And there were fun things that I was able to achieve and a lot of attention that I brought myself, but it led to some opportunities opportunities earlier in my career that I was not ready for. Um, Mm. But that would be my advice is take classes, find stages, Mm. make sketches. The internet is also a stage. You know, it's a great place to test content, test ideas and don't hold anything too precious. Like some people spend years without even doing anything because they overthink and they like, uh, you know, hyper judge so much so that they will years will go by without even like trying something yeah. and it's just like you got to throw shit against the wall and see what sticks and um yeah i'm i'm definitely the type of person like if i have an idea it like drives me nuts until i can make it does your brain ever shut off no no creatively uh, no. i love that gabby's answering that <laughs> even in his sleep even in his sleep, he's like, yeah, 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 dude. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, dude. Oh. Are you a sleep talker too? I am. Yeah, this I think one. the hyperactive, because we've talked about this. But like, I haven't I haven't in a while. At least I don't think. Oh, that's um, good. Uh, magnesium has been helping. But, okay, good but to wait, know. But wait, do you, oh, so you sleep talk. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, Wakes yeah. Wakes me up. 
every night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> really? Are yeah. you uh, in? Are you doing a, a sketch? I'm testing you, bits. He's testing. No, 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 no. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. <laughs> I believed you. I said, "Oh, wow, that's nice." Actually- <laughs> but no, I mean, it's hard for me to fall asleep. It's very hard for me to turn my brain off, especially when I'm like excited about something. It's like I get so I get so fixated on just wanting to make the thing and. And like, I'll, I'll be up at night. And if I have an idea, I can't, I'm not one of those people that can like, all right, I'll do it in the morning. Yeah. I'm always nervous. I'll forget an idea. So yeah. like I have notes in my phone that sometimes I don't even know what yeah. it means, but yeah. Interesting. <laughs> I love it. It reminds it. me of an episode of Seinfeld where he's like, I'm writing anytime I'm sleep. I think it was Seinfeld. I'm sleeping and I had a notepad. He like wakes up, mm-hmm. he writes the joke. And then he goes back to sleep and then the next morning it doesn't make any sense. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jane, I don't know if you know this. I was going to ask a question, ask? but I don't, I think there's a typo. Oh, shit. It's your question. Oh, sh- of course. But hold on <laughs> oh. a second. Just ask it, babe. For almost 10 years, that one, we had yeah. a show called Oh yeah, something, that was, that's Something Pratt Show. It was the, what oh, was yeah. it called? The Shane? It's called and the Hopefully, and Kyle has been a part of some of those. It, yeah. huh? The Hopefully Chris Pratt and Shane Hartline <laughs> Show. And uh, in a nutshell, it was basically like for so many years, people were like, you look like Chris Pratt. You look like Chris Pratt. You need to do something with your likeness, like a video or something. And and I just didn't want to do just a video. And like and then it like hit me. I was just going to do a one off show at the um, Iowa West Comedy Theater. Yeah. Rest in peace. Oh, that's Rest right. in peace. Rest in peace. But I was just going to do a one off comedy show where it was like um, a little bit of a mix of a publicity stunt and a bit comedy show where we were legit trying to get Chris Pratt to come do the show with us. And we did it and it was for the theater. It was something that was very different and it was the first show was a real big success. And so they immediately after the first show, like the next day they were like, Oh, please do this monthly. So I went from like, you know, being, I kind of skipped over the normal process at that comedy theater of like auditioning and getting on a house team or doing that thing. I like pitched a show and got a monthly main stage slot where they wow. let me do anything I want. Wow. And like Kyle can tell you, they let us do anything. We really like pushed the limits of like what that theater would allow and what we could do in that theater. Like, I mean, huh. we, it was a mix of like a stunt show, a gross out show, a sketch show, an improv show. We were jumping off the balconies. We had like prop guns and like, we really, it was it was just fun to see what we could get away with and try to make a show out of it. And Chris Pratt happened to be the through line of this stupid show, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, not stupid, this silly show. And then seven shows in he, I'll never forget. I woke up to a phone call and a buddy of mine was, uh, I woke up to a text and he was like, I'm at yoga. Chris Pratt is here. I'm going to go talk to him about the show to, that was happening that night. And I'm like, yeah, okay. I get a call 10 minutes later and he's like, I talked to Chris. He knows about the show. He's coming to the show tonight. And he gave me his number. And I'm like, oh my God. So my the whole day I'm thinking, it's really happening. Now what? Because yeah. Wait, we Chris, never, I never expected Chris for Chris to show up. So we were an hour before the show in our like kind of quick run through rehearsal. We would do outside on Cosmo was it just these quick talk throughs of like we really never rehearsed it was like um I would do an outline and mm-hmm. like okay this is what's going to happen then you're going to come in and, and then it was like miraculously the, that was a, some of the magic of that show it was like always ended up kind of coming together and it was always just chaos but just the be- in the best way my buddy that saw Chris that day walks up with his phone and Chris is facetiming and he's like and telling him he can't make it but he wants to FaceTime into the show. And I'm like, this was one of those moments where like uh, a divine in- energy came into me. And I, one of my best creative decisions in a split second was I knew if he was FaceTiming, I wouldn't be able to like reuse that. Yeah. It would just be like in the moment kind of thing. I'm like, oh, can he ask if he can text you a video? Because then I knew I would have that video forever. And it's on YouTube. If you just search Shane Hartline, Chris Pratt, it's Chris Pratt when he was still with Anna Ferris, a video of him and her post sex <laughs> shouting me out, telling me they wish they could have come to the show, oh, hope sad. they can come to one in the future. But we showed it at the end of the show that night and the place went ape shit. It was very cool. Um, post sex, post coital, as he put it in the yeah, video. Well, how did you know they were post? That's what post coital means. No, I know that, but how, how did you know they were post? They were laying in bed. They were under the cover, shirtless, basically. 
Um, and yeah, so that, that is a cool, cool thing that happened. <laughs> I love it. The intimacy of it all. <laughs> but even, but since then it's been like, cool. It's like he followed me on Instagram and, and you know, like the dream one day would be to like make something with him, you know, um, cause I think you he's so talented. Totally play brothers. I could, oh. I mean. I'd love it. Hands Put it down. out there. Put it out there. Hands down. Uh, Chris Pratt, you're looking for someone to play your brother, Shane Hartline. I mean, he's Can I do one. the Pratt? Yeah, is yeah, it the, yeah. What yeah. do they call it? Smiling? The Smolder? Smolder. Smolder. Yeah. I used to yeah. do sort of, a, sort of a Chris Pratt impression. A little bit. He talks a little bit like this. Talks a little bit, I guess. Oh my God. I love <laughs> it. I buy it. I believe it. I'd buy it. I for sure. How, how are we on time? My producer. Um, we, we are good. We'll, we'll let you know. We'll, we'll lead you out. Don't worry. We got oh, you. Oh, we're good. We got you. Um, so yeah. Your wife mentioned that you're kind of a legend in the Hollywood comedy scene. Yeah. Um You destroyed my What? Point. I'm so sorry. It's Louis, come on. Oh my gosh. It's all good. He just used you. I, I he, feel violated. He used you to get his treats out. Canceled. <laughs> Louis canceled. Um you are very passionate about wrestling. Mm-hmm. Uh do you have a foot fetish, by the way? I do not. And in no way. But no. can I tell you a fun producer fact about yeah. our show? Yeah. I was looking up analytics on the podcast of like where a lot of our views come from. <laughs> no way. Mm -hmm. Do you know that I'm not going to say exactly how much because I don't want to give them the credit, but a large portion of our views for podcasting comes from WikiFeet. From the site, the views. Are you literally giving hot. them bait? Yeah, I'm actually, my feet are kind of hot. You're giving them like, free... No, I just want to, cause you know what? Oh, that's so pretty. It's Look not. At the color it's not. Why color. did you also? I'm not. Fuck off. <laughs> Go, my fuck actual, off. My, I just got my toes done. We mad. But why did you? Why did you ask me that? Because, because I don't I know. Your, my feet your out. foot. Uh, her I needed. I needed. Her feet were on you, and I thought, oh, I needed. It'd, it'd be fun to ask. What him did if you he think I was fetish. getting horned up? <laughs> horned baby. up over some foot. Yeah. <laughs> horned up. I'm real. Horned. No, I need I'm to up right now, as Dude. my friend, as my buddy Tim Tim De La Mott would say. I always thought. <sighs> you're good. You're good. I always thought wrestling was Don't fake say ish. It. Don't say it. I think Did I'm one of those it? people. There are a lot of debates about yeah. people who see wrestling as mm -hmm. fake. Mm -hmm. And we know that you're very passionate about wrestling. So can you talk about, A, what inspired you to mm -hmm. want to be a wrestler? Mm -hmm. and, you're good. You're good. and B, what are your thoughts on it being actually wrestling or, you guys are good. or you performance? Um, we got cameos. Oh, we have cameos. <laughs> <laughs> We're actually recording a sesh. You, guys, so you actually just bumped the views of my episode up by like. I'm so sorry. Okay, show your feet. Show, show your, your feet. feet. We have a huge wiki feet audience. Show your feet. Guys, oh wait, we don't want to see his feet. That's <laughs> not true. I have wonderful, good-looking feet. Wait, uh, actually, he, he just has soccer. He has soccer feet. No, that's not. Nice. Do you have soccer feet? But you know What's what? What's soccer I have feet? Feet that have done a lot of time. In sports. He has feet that have have done a lot of time in sports, and uh, thus. Have, I feel weird. I have such an she, he has. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually. My, all my producer brain is thinking right now is that bagels. just bumped my episode up like five thousand views. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Jay. Thank you. Love you guys. Woohoo! Yeah, get him. Get his ass. Um, I love him. the last so, part of that question. So okay, a, what inspired you to become so passionate about mm -hmm. wrestling and, and actually wrestle and and wrestle? Mm -hmm. Yes, and b. What are your thoughts on people who think that wrestling is fake? I'll start with that one. I always, I love talking to people about that. It actually happened the other night. Mm -hmm. Somebody came up to me and was just like trying to trigger me and like be like, you know, it's fake, right? And I'm like, do you watch any television? Mm -hmm. Do you watch any movies? Do you watch Marvel movies? And they were like, yeah. I'm like, you realize that's fake. You realize that's entertainment. Mm -hmm. And they're like, yeah, but they're not pretending to fight in real life in front of people. Right. All right, let's back that up. Have you ever been to the Waterworld show at Universal? Have you ever been to a dinner in uh, medieval times? Mm -hmm. Do you not, do you sit there and do you take in the entertainment mm -hmm. or do you sit there and be like, this is fake. Fuck this. Right. 90% of the time you take it in as entertainment and you know what you're getting yourself into and you just enjoy it for what it is. And for what mm -hmm. it is to me and what I believe what it really is, it's the last form 
of theater in the round mm. that exists like this. There's nothing like it that mixes uh, athleticism that mixes a live stunt show, hmm. that mixes acting, that mixes long-term storytelling, you have, and you get one take at it, and you are performing in front of sometimes 70 to 80,000 people. But there are many techniques so that you're Oh, you have to learn. It is, and- it's much like taking stunt classes. You okay. have to learn okay. how to do the moves, the sequences, and that's the, re- the reason that so many wrestling fans or wrestlers get offended by when people call it fake is while it is choreographed. What's happening in there is very real. Mm. Um, And some people can't wrap their minds around why you would do it. To me, it's the same reason people would choose to do something like football that is abusive to their body, but it is still an art form. It's still athleticism. It's still Mm -hmm. a show. Mm -hmm. Um, for me, like as a fan, I've watched it my whole life. These, some of these characters like sting is a character. And I really was dissecting it recently. I was like, because I'm about to see his last match. Why is he so important to me? It's because he's so entangled with some of my best memories of my life. Like my buddy, you know, my buddies, Jason and Kyle, like my buddy, Jason passed when I was on set of station 19, two years ago, my One of my best memories in my life was watching my first wrestling pay-per-view with them. And that was the night they became wrestling fans. They got it. And then for years, we would go to shows together, wear wrestling shirts together to school. My dad um, used to be a wrestler in the 80s and got me into it when I was very young. So I have such early memories of watching Hulk Hogan with him. And, you know, so it's like for me, it's like these characters like Sting have gone through my whole life. Mm -hmm. Like so to go see his last match soon is going to be really exciting, emotional, because it's like. I've watched the story for 30 years. You know what I mean? So there's no other storytelling like this where, you know, what happens in real life in the sense of like, you have a wrestler out there and they're trying to make him, let's say a good guy on Mm -hmm. TV, Mm -hmm. a good guy character, but the audience does not like this guy that will start to dictate the story. Sometimes that happens a little bit on like television where an online audience can Mm -hmm. infiltrate a little bit. Their opinion can swerve a story a little bit, but that doesn't happen all the time. doesn't really happen with movies. You know, for the most part, it's the artist is telling their story and you have to take for take it for what it is, you know, Mm -hmm. but wrestling's really interesting in that, like whatever happens in real life, injuries, audience response, um, uh, real life incidents. relationships, anything can change the world of wrestling. I mean, not to get too political or like touchy, but the guy who made the WWE what it is, Vince McMahon is basically been written out of history because of horrible allegations that happened. And that was real. Those victims are real victims of shit he did behind the scenes. And all that he did is be basically being wiped from history as it should But it's like, that's real. There's no faking that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, people getting injured while it's in fake fighting, those are real injuries. People have died. You know, people have literally died to perform and entertain. And it's, you know, to judge it as calling it fake um, is would be the same thing as like judging somebody's art form and acting or Mm -hmm. something. It's it's their way to paint. It's their canvas. Have you ever gotten injured? Oh yeah. I have permanent injuries from the few years that I did it. Like, uh, very quickly. I have like a bone that's floating in my shin from a wrestling match. My nose was broken like twice. Um, I still have rotator cuff shit (gasps) because I was dropped on my rotator cuff. Uh! Um, just in like three years from doing it. And, and you're, um, you're going to practice tomorrow too, right? I'm gonna pr- I think I'm going to go practice gonna, this week. Gotta, I just, I'm, I'm getting itchy. I don't know what I want to do in it again, but I, I do want to just it's that kind of, you know, the ego thing of like when you go to the gym and you're like, uh-huh. I just want to see if I can still do yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, That's it. I just want to yeah. see if I can still well, do it. He, he's come home with like bruises. There, there was a bruise on his arm that was there for almost like two weeks. Yeah, the ropes are no geez. joke too. There, like they'll, yeah. they'll bruise you. Yeah. The thing with wrestling, like anything, is the longer you don't do it, that's yeah. when it really hurts. The yeah. more you do it and the more you stay consistent with it, like your body almost gets used to it. Um, the, It's like a constant car crash that you kind of learn how to like, <laughs> right. That you learn how to like take. Yeah. Damn. I mean, whew. 
I, I mean, it hurts. It hurt. It hurts. It's it's fun to watch, but I'm thinking yeah. about it and yeah. knowing how. It, yeah, it's a lot. Physically demanding. It takes it, is. It takes a yeah. lot off. Well, yeah. we got to get um shout out to uh one of the female wrestling shows, Glow. Oh yeah, yes. Shakira Barrera was on. We'll we'll have her. She's gonna be on soon. Yeah, episodes. we've been trying to get her on. Who's your favorite female wrestler, by the way? Oh, currently Rhea Ripley. Mommy, yo, that's my girl crush right now. Did he just crush? say mommy? That's what she goes by. But, oh, mommy. but also, I thought you were calling her mommy. But I was also, like, mommy. He's calling her mommy. But also, we love mommy. her. <laughs> love her. She's hot though. She's hot. I'll give it to um, her. Yeah. We have before we get into our this or that. Do you have anything else you want to share I mean, or I, ask? It, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I live with him, and so I know everything that's happening in, in his life. Um, but I do want to slightly talk about one of his future projects or, oh, yeah. or something that he's cooking yeah back to mm. music well it's it's um, at this point yeah, it'll be out it. so uh by the time you're watching this uh i had this idea a while ago i've always wanted to i mean who as a as a boy to, at one point didn't want to be a part of like a rock band or a boy band or something i always wanted to be a part of a boy band when i was younger but i was <laughs> I like chunky little redhead uh freckles vocal condition I, it was a delusional thinking at the time maybe you never know um but I was heavily inspired by a comedian friend, Kyle Gordon of mine recently. He put out, he puts out some of the best, you know, comedy songs and parody songs. And I'm sure you've heard of like planet of the bass and that kind of thing. But I was inspired by him because I was like, he's doing it solo, but I wanted to do a boy band. And, but I knew I'm not, not very good singer. I'm average good. Um, mostly silly songs and stuff, but I was like, I want to surround myself by really good singers mm -hmm. and get it produced really well and make a really good video. Shout out to Kyle for shooting that video. Yeah. And makes a cameo Shout out in Kyle. it. Makes a cameo. Yeah. But as of now, you can go see Perfect Girl by uh, Not Now. Perfect Girl. Um, uh, and it's available everywhere. Just what I really want to do, and you guys can help, is um, if everything goes according to plan, I will have at this point started this kind of internet campaign where I want to kind of prank the internet in a sense. And what I want people to do is make videos where they've like found this old CD of this song or this they've they they found a tape with the music video or something where it's like film a TikTok, film a, an Instagram reel where you're finding an old CD and being like, do you guys remember this song from the early 2000s? <laughs> I want a Mandela effect prank the internet. And that's how I want to get this song out there. I love that. Because it really does kind of feel like a real yeah. song. Yeah. Um, but yeah, perfect girl out there. We're working with legit with break records to get this out there. Um, but, shout out break records. Yeah. But shooting the video was so much it fun. It was so fun. Because I think all of us were living our teenage oh, 100%. Yeah. without realizing it. Because we were at some point there was like this this it was in an awesome studio I can't remember the name of it but it was like a box where it looked like a cloud and we were all in a cloud I don't know if you remember that shot and we in I think in that moment we were all like because then we had to do like solos and you know we're dancing and doing oh, yeah. our thing you got your spotlight and I remember feeling like oh this is oh is this what it is this what it was what mm. it felt early oh, Y two K wow. was yeah. all about that and we at the end of the day we were all like I'm kind of do you feel like your inner, your teenager is kind of like, yeah, freaking out right now because you're having a little taste of what it would be? Different from Gabby when she star. was uh, <laughs> talking about, wait, I don't know if that episode has come out yet, but we shot an episode with Gabby where she speaks about, you know, recording her song and you'll see that because I'm not sure it has come out yet, but she's like, I don't know if I want to be a pop star. No, I, <laughs> I would do that in a heartbeat. Put me on a tour with NSYNC or Backstreet Boys. I'm not going to lie. There is a part of my soul that would love to be in a boy band yeah. and uh, love to live the rock star life. I'm not going to lie about that. So <laughs> if this takes off, I'm stoked. Let's yeah. do it. Let's do it. What would be the thing you do on the road? Like, what do you mean? What would, what would be the thing you would have the most? Oh, fun so many doing? groupies, so much cocaine, so much. No, I'm kidding. Um, I was like, Oh my gosh. Um, no, it's, it's the same thing as like doing comedy. It's like the live uh, performing in front of an audience yeah. of like that. It's just, would it be so fun? The ultimate dream I really think would be to find a uni. And I'm really trying to work on this as like, uh, you know, a bigger picture project is like finding a way to do some kind of live performance that intertwines everything like acting, comedy, wrestling, music, yeah. Yeah. Uh, just this Ooh. big crazy ass 
comedy show. It could. But, it sounds yeah. too like it could be like almost like a biopic of like forming a boy band movie. Oh yeah, mockumentary cool. could be something. Cool. But, yeah. yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Um, you want to get? So, let's yeah. get into a, a little bit of this or that. Uh huh. Okay. You want me to? Go okay, ahead. this you is start the, it off. this or that wrestling edition. Okay. All right, baby. Andre the Giant or the Undertaker? Undertaker. <laughs> Rowdy or Sting? Oh, Sting. I mean, that was a tough one, though. Hulk or CM Punk? Mm, Hulk. Bruiser uh, Brody or Jericho? Bruiser. Stone Cold or Ric Flair? Oh, my God. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I got to go Rick. Got to go Rick. Rhonda or Becky? Becky. All right, last one. The Rock or Roman? Oh, The Rock, hundred <gasps> percent. Nice. I only. Have I you think seen? I, Gina, I think have I you only seen know Roman? one person on that list. <laughs> Roman Hulk? Rock. No. Wait. Roman. Do I know Hogan. Hogan. Bro- eh, the Rock for sure. Mm. I mean, have you seen you Roman smell? though? What the Rock? Jana, would you ever go to a wrestling match? If you were I'd given free tickets. Oh my god, get, that would be so much. I get fun. like you know what that feeling yeah, of you, nervous you going energy? De- down a roller coaster and you feel that thing. You'd be in nervous your, watching it. I would. I. I. I think I'd. Oh my god! If I ever time. wrestle again out here, I would. Ooh, I that would be so you know to take asshole her to clenches because you you're like scared. But it's no, it's fun. I thought uh, that too, and then I I'm started going. My butt and then I'll, speak about it. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I can. handle No, it, it is fun. And what's funny too? Uh, a couple Christmases ago, we went to a match in Puerto Rico, oh. and and it was a completely different vibe. It was pretty cool. It was so cool. It was like in this um basketball court you know and so it was very underground i don't know if that's the right term but you know just very Mm -hmm. uh base basic and it was kind of cool independent wrestling independent wrestling yeah it was kind of cool to see the pr version of it too compared to you know the professional uh version but we i had fun i have fun in matches like no joke i do have fun you get to yell at the wrestlers and like just talk shit and it's a part of it does it get does it get a little bit like ugh, sometimes no, especially I, I, the whole time blood? I'm like oh, my oh gosh, yeah they go insane too? yeah 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 because they <gasps> do like uh, wire Death match at hardcore matches it, that's that, that I, I don't like that that as much. I don't agree with because yeah. that's like a little bit messed up okay but, really yeah. quick this or that food oh shit start it up oh sh- ah, ah, hold on a second hold on. okay pa- uh, go ahead pasta or pizza pizza. This, you, you need to Mac this. and cheese or Gabby's bolognese? Mm, mac and cheese. <gasps> Just to trigger her. Bolognese is fine. Whatever. Sushi or Thai? Sushi. Donuts or cake? D- oh, God dang it, cake. Cake? I guess. We got a cameo coming in. This is going to be the highest viewed episode high- ever. Yeah, you know what? You're bringing <laughs> in. <laughs> All right. Tacos or burger? Uh, burgers. <laughs> Eggs or pancakes? Pancakes. Last one. Puerto Rican food or American food? Oh, shit. Oh. Uh, <laughs> well, no. I guess I'm going to have to say Puerto Rican food. Yeah. Good answer. Hey. hey. Oh, hey guys. Give a cameo in mine and then I'll get more views. What's up? Say what's up. Say, what's up? Hey, yo, what's going on? <laughs> Jay made a cameo too. I'm going to have the bit, most viewed episode ever. What's up? Well, thank you. Hey, hey, hey. Right. we're finishing oh, up. Hi. Thank you so much for joining us on yeah. today's episode with Shane Hartline. Thank you, thank we got you. to know a little bit more about you, your 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 background, your passions, your everything. I mean and just um, the- I, I, I just can't wait to see what you I know you're always you're always cooking something. So I feel like I'm always waiting with anticipation <laughs> on what you're doing next. And like I know we see the com- the comedic side of him, but I, I and I'm I'm not just saying this because he's my husband and I love him, but he is such an incredible creator and uh, a filmmaker, phenomenal performer. I I admire Shane mm. outside of being my husband, also just because I just love his artistry and and. Thank you, baby. You guys, I want to share a quick story real quick incredible. before we wrap up. Well, I feel like we have a quick second. Is, um, well, I just want to say a couple things wrapping this up. Like one, I'm so proud of us for sticking with this. Yeah, um, th- it's hard to in anything in this industry to make something happen, but not only make something happen, but stick with it. Jaina, I've said, we've said this to you off air, but we're so grateful for you because you're Mm. while, you know, like I do a lot of work behind the scenes to make this happen. Like this show wouldn't be what it would be without you and taking the time out at like your insanely busy schedule. I want to share a fun story real quick about 
like the moment like Jaina became like, I feel like a good friend of mine or oh, I viewed her oh boy. like as like, you know, it's like, oh, this girl's like a ride or die. I was on set station 19. Um, we had an incident happen where I was in a fire truck and, you know, I'm trying to think of the best way to say this, but I'll, I'll just be real. So uh, somebody set off the alarm. Somebody set off the alarm in the truck. And I think it it was me, but I didn't know how I did it. So I'm like panicked because one, I'm new to this job. I don't want to lose this job. This is a dream come true. And I'm panicking, trying to t- fix my mistake. And what I didn't know is on the floor of these fire trucks, there's a, the button to press and turn on the alarm. And mm-hmm. that's what I was doing is I kept pressing the button, didn't know it, but also nobody told me it wasn't like my fault. It wasn't anybody's mm-hmm. fault. Mm-hmm. And so I'm panicking and somebody came up who was, you know, in charge of, you know, overseeing certain things. And he came in hot and, you know, at the time, um, at the time I could have probably handled this a bit different too, but I'm definitely the type of person where you come hot to me. I get, I don't, I don't allow people to disrespect me or anyone that I work with. Like, so I stood up for myself, but I also knew my place and I walked away, but almost before I could defend myself, Jaina came in like a hawk mother hinned it and was like, no, 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 no. This is not going to be how this happens to the, to the, to the person that was, was coming at me. And in that moment, I was, I was like, one, you didn't have to do that, but it showed who you are and you are one on the call sheet. So it is your energy you put out on that set. And the fact that you protected me and looked out for me, like, and you didn't have to Baby. I'm sorry. Aww. Like it's something that really like, you know, because that's a very vulnerable place to be as a, like, this was a dream come true. And I showed up every day and I wanted to be somebody that like, uh, was fun to be around, but also worked my ass off and brought a lot to the show. And, and that you did. thank you. That means a lot. And the fact that you looked out for me and you didn't have to was something I'll never fucking forget. And that's mm. why I will always have your back. And like, this, that's why this show means so much to me. So, well, thank you for sharing that. My gosh, I mean, men cry. You yeah, see? hell yeah, hell yeah, <laughs> as they should. Yes, as you, baby. thank you for sharing. Thank that. you guys thank you for, for the being support. so open with us, and thank you for sharing that. And I, I've had your back before, and I'll never stop having your back. Yeah, likewise. So, um, I love this. Also, huge shout out to the reason why this podcast exists. Shane Hartline. Kyle mm-hmm. Health, too, which and is going to be on an Kyle episode Health, here soon. He'll be, he'll be I'm excited for you guys to really meet he's, Kyle. Yes. Yeah, he's like this hidden... He's like this hidden gem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He, he's also <laughs> hidden... He's a movie... Yeah. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a specter he's a, <laughs> in the night. But uh, it was so lovely to have great. you this on the fun. other side of the camera. Yeah. And yeah. To, to, to this and many more. Okay, cool. Yes. Sounds good. I'll see you at home, baby. Yeah, yeah, I'll see you later. Love, bye. We love you. Love we you love guys. Some Shane Thank Hartline. you. Thank you for tuning Thank in. We'll see you watching. next episode on After We Wrap. Bye. 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 <laughs> that was so-